Hey Broken, is there another DPS you can play that's a little bit more meta? Hey, what's up everyone? It's John from D-Pad Dubs, and today we're going to talk about Mr. Hot Splooge, Santa Clad himself, Torbjorn the Turret God. In our previous video about current meta heroes, we made a discovery that would change the course of Season 19 for the D-Pad. This discovery would spark a personal journey, dare I say an odyssey. Torbjorn, the short of height but stout of heart, currently has a disgusting win rate and he plays like he means business. I wanted to share some tips I've learned over the past couple weeks of playing him. Number one, turret placement is crucial and there's really two concepts behind where to throw the turret. The first is placing it on high ground, the second of course would be placing it on low ground. When your turret is on high ground it has the largest line of sight but it's also the most exposed. I paused the video here to give an example of how the turret can get value without getting kills. The diva dives my turret on the high ground, but now her boost is on cooldown and she gets punished for this play. The second is low ground and in this play the enemy is rushing the payload and I want to keep them off it for long enough so our team can secure the first objective. I throw my turret just behind the enemy as they run in. This divides their attention. If the enemy team turns around, they're missing the action up front. If they ignore the turret, they'll take sustained damage and this ultimately gives my team the upper hand. Be creative with your turret placement, keep the enemy guessing, and be forward thinking. If they are going to rush an objective, place it somewhere to pinch their team. If they are running flankers, keep it safely in your backline. Number two, Primary fire is your bread and butter. Your shotgun should be used sparingly. Torb's primary fire has no damage fall off. This makes him great at range. Of course, this takes practice because his primary fire arcs over range. The quicker you master his primary fire, the quicker you become an elite Torb. His shotgun's fire rate is faster than primary, so I use it for extreme close range fights and for finishing off a low health enemy. You should not be spamming his shotgun. It is wildly inaccurate and can be a crutch for players with bad aim. Just remember, primary fire, aim higher, lead your shot, win games. Number three, this is all about your overload ability. Using your overload will take practice, it has a 12 second cooldown, so you'll have to learn the balance between saving it and spamming it. Don't use it to run faster out of spawn, dear god, it's tempting as hell and I am the most guilty of it, but in high ranked games we'll get punished for having that on cooldown. I like to overload Reinhardt's when they start getting a little too close to the team, they'll either shield up and we can melt that, or they'll back up out of the fight, which is a huge win or they die to a smattering of angry shock and fire. Start thinking about enemy cooldowns. Mei uses her ice block, Zarya uses personal shield, Rode uses his heal, you get it. Attack with overload to punish the opposing team when they mismanage their cooldowns. The other time I use it is to escape. The armor you get makes you invincible. Don't tunnel vision, my friend. Live to fight another day. Number four, Molten Core. When you are unloading that hot goo all over the enemy team, there's two really important things to think about. The first is don't hold your fire while shooting your ult. The damage does not stack, and if you hold down fire, the chance of it stacking is higher and you don't cover as much area. The second is when to use it. It's an excellent tool for zoning the enemy team off a point. You can pre-fire doorways you know they're running through, or if they're in a confined area, think a small room, a bridge, or pushing a payload. I like to start with shooting behind the enemy team, then working my way up to the front of their team. That way, no matter if they go forward or backwards, they're surrounded by your load. Now anywhere they step is hot and sticky. Perfect. Number five. Get creative. This one is really simple. Torb is a pain in the neck. And no matter what his win rate is, he will always be a troll pick. Embrace this role. Succumb to the dark side and eradicate all who stand in your way. He should be used to frustrate the other team. I'm not telling you to teabag the other team after face melting them with your shotgun. But I'm also not saying don't teabag the enemy team. 
Torbjorn's most elite ability is using his short stature to sneak into the minds of the enemy team and seeding his dark troll tactics deep in their neural pathways. Keep them guessing by constantly putting your turret in new areas. There's nothing worse than facing a Torb who seemingly pops up out of nowhere with his turret and overload. Think mid-fight placements. Force the enemy team to dedicate resources to killing your turret. Now your team can steamroll. Coordinate with your team and cause distractions so they can make an easy push forward. Torb has the capability of dealing boatloads of damage, but I prefer playing as the tiny terror, the stubby shadow walker. Now, use this guide, get out there and troll your enemy, make them regret downloading the game of Overwatch. We're gonna be making more guides in the near future, so leave a comment down below and let us know what hero you want us to make a guide about. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It means a whole lot to us. And as always, thanks for hanging out in the D-pad.